Hello! So today we're going to be playing uh, a little bit of a simpler game. It's just going to be a Champions Conference game and it's going to be a Story Weaver game. So I talk about this line a lot. Um, but basically, Champ Conference, um, this is the portal I'm standing on. Um, of these portals, I just hate anything that's gold related. I feel like all the most unbalanced augments are in gold right now. So anything that gives me a gold augment, I, I actively avoid. Um, so I like Champions Conference because there's a couple lines that are really good with Champions Conference, right? Um, one of them, like anything where you spike off of one particular unit is really good. So for example, Reapers, uh, because you get a cane. Uh, Story Weaver, because you get um, Irelia and you can get Galio really easily, so it removes that ability that you really need to spat. Uh, things like uh, Faded or Umbral, right? Basically anything, or even Lilia to a certain extent, but Lilia is a little bit awkward because like you can get offered different units. But basically anything where there's like a, uh, a comp that is gated by a particular 4 cost, right? Um, those are the ones that spike really hard off of Champions Conference because basically you get a unit that fits your team. So if you're already playing towards one of these units or one of these boards, um, you're basically guaranteed to get one copy of that unit. At the same time, so is everybody else. But lines like, I don't know, like a reroll or um, or certain reroll comps, right? Like obviously if you have like a Dryad plus one, this it's really broken in Champions Conference because you get in a zero for free and you'll be six Dryad guaranteed. But like certain reroll lines, like let's say like a Senna line, for example, or even like a Kaisa line. Um, some of those are a little bit more awkward to play around uh, or an Ash line because like an Ash one, um, if you're playing Ash Contest, you're probably eighth anyways, but like you're not even guaranteed the Ash one in some cases because uh, you're probably going to be tailoring Warden and Sniper. It's like some lines are a, le a little bit less awkward, but the ones that you need a particular four or five cost to uh, cap out in are typically ones you want to go towards when you're playing towards uh, Champions Conference. So here I'm like looking at my stuff. I'm thinking okay like Runan's a good Irelia item. I could make like something else here like I want to hold on to a uh, component to make a shiv probably. Uh, Young Wild and Free is pretty good because if there's a spat I can get it and I see Fine Vintage. Now Fine Vintage isn't the best line. I have played this line before so I feel really comfortable with it. Uh, Fine Vintage is usually something you play with like Duelists, Reapers it's not so good with. Uh, Duelists is another comp that's really good here because you basically just get a, a guaranteed Lee Sin and a guaranteed Irelia. So I could have played towards Duelists with Fine Vintage, uh, but I just decide that I have a Story Weaver opening. I'll just play uh, Fine Vintage Story Weaver. Uh, I also have this uh, Amumu drop early, so I have a decent front line as well. Uh, so I pick Green Kale. I think it depends. Every, uh, before I used to think it was always Red Kale. Uh, because like that was like the consensus a lot of the time then everybody said it's always green kale now a lot of people are saying it's always blue kale I'm just talking about what the first one it's always something and then it's blue uh, blue uh, you need advanced stats in order to check it I asked my friend to check and he said it's always green uh, I'm not sure about it uh, for me at least I took green here because uh, if I'm playing vertical story weaver and I'm playing towards seven story weaver uh, because I'm playing fine vintage, I just don't want to have to hold on to and or make shred components uh, until maybe much later in the game. That's my thought process, right? Because I want to find vintage every item. I'll just take the one that gives me the shred so that I have less required items to make, basically. Uh, but anyways, if we look at the stats on this, it's not the greatest. Um, obviously, it's not going to be broken by any means. Uh, but if you go like, uh, let's say like 7, Story Weaver... And you go fine vintage. I, I don't even think it's pause. Yeah, it's it's like it's good. See, like like it's good in terms of like average placement, right? If you uh, I'm gonna hit seven story weaver because I'm guaranteed a Galio. Even if I don't get a story weaver plus one, I'm gonna be guaranteed an Irelia because it's a uh, champions conference. So I'm always gonna be seven story weaver. And fine vintage is pretty good. Basically, um when you look at the support items, let's go items here, and let's just go. Uh, support all the support items are really good when you're playing vertical story weaver uh, Kale is your carry so you don't really care too much about the itemizations of the other units a lot of times You're like playing towards like Irelia items or generic frontline items uh, But uh, that's why fine vintage works. Okay with it, right? Uh, you can get lock in and ages which are really good frontline items But basically you're trying to stack Zeke's on the back line make the kale get as much attack speed as possible So she casts as much as possible. You're probably gonna have enough AP so you don't really need chalice but basically you just want uh, all the frontline ones, Locket, Aegis, 
uh, Randuins, and then you want to stack a bunch of Zeeks on your backline, your whole backline attacks fast as fuck, and you just go crazy, right? And then obviously you can fill in the gaps, like you can get Spite and Cleaver if you want to get those, uh, but typically that's the, the, the items that you're stacking are uh, these ones. Banshees is also sometimes taken, right? It's, it's kind of like a worse Zeeks, but um, if there's Nautilus players and set players, you know, not having your kill get stunned is really nice. So all of these work out really well, and that's all I'm going to do. It's going to be a very easy game. Um, if you're looking for something that's easy to play, right, uh, Story Over Plus One would find Vintage. Um, if you're playing just Vertical Story Weaver, find Vintage is a little bit awkward uh, because hitting 7 Story Weaver, if you don't, like, Natural and Irelia sometime is going to be pretty bad. Uh, there's another guy playing Story Weaver, obviously, so this guy just has way more upgrades than me, so I'm not going to streak this stage. I'm not going to streak stage 2, uh, but the main thing you can think about is that, like, you know, um, the, main, the main thing to think about, at least, is uh, that eventually i'll i'll hit seven story weaver even if i'm contested i will get a guaranteed galio and i will get a guaranteed irelia um and that's why i'm going towards this line specifically for the portal um otherwise i wouldn't really suggest aiming story weaver unless you have a story weaver plus one right or your position is really good right you either have to because with story weaver if you don't have a story weaver plus one you have to fast nine in order to find that irelia or you have to hope they just high roll into an irelia and most boards will just play irelias anyways Nobody's really going to pass up on an Irelia, so it's really hard to, like, just natural into it, right? Because a lot of other boards will just hold on to her. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, we get a couple upgrades here. Uh, I'm going to be inherently weaker earlier in the game because of Fine Vintage, right? Uh, but I'm just going to Fine Vintage everything for now. Um, I think that, like, it's a little bit more of a risky play, right? Obviously, like, I have Spark, I could have gone Red Kale and put a Spark on somebody. I could have played something other than Fine Vintage, right? And, like, play around it like that. Um, in this case, I just, I, I'm just more, I, I'm kind of familiar with this line and, like, what items, where to put them and how to position, kind of, and, because I've played it more than once. There's another video on this channel, I think I got, like, third in that video. Um, so I'm just like, yeah, I'll just do something I know how to do, right? It's really hot in my room. Uh, I'm really tired and stressed. So I'm like, you know what? If we're just going to play this game for the daily upload, make sure that it's here in time. I'm just going to go with something that I know I can just get a top four with and get out, right? Not really play for first, not really play for eighth. I'm probably going to go like at worst fourth this game is what I'm thinking in my head. Oh, which is good if you're trying to climb, right? Um, if you haven't tried this out, I, I, I suggest give it a try. Also, thank you for all the subscribers and the... Uh, uh, we now have YouTube memberships. Uh, there's like details about it if you click join. Uh, obviously, you don't have to support through membership. All the same things that you get from a membership, you can also get from a Twitch Prime on my Twitch channel. I'll probably announce it eventually, probably when I do the giveaway. Uh, giveaway will happen starting, hopefully starting tomorrow, but I might only start on Tuesday. Basically, at one point next week, I'll make a bunch of posts about it, and I'll put details in every single video. So don't worry, you won't miss a, you won't miss the 500 YouTube sub RP giveaway that I talked about and is on the sub goal, right? Uh, it's coming. I just have to organize stuff in my day-to-day -day life first, and then I'll figure it out. Uh, anyways, making 20 here, uh, really important. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just stacking a bunch of frontline, right? Because my Kale's doing everything for me. Um, until I hit 5 Story Weaver, I just want like a lot of frontline. Uh, I took Banshees as my first item. Uh, I think when I popped the item anvil, I didn't really hit anything else. Banshees is basically like a Zeke's that doesn't hit as many units, but it makes it so that my Kale doesn't get stunned. Uh, which is really nice, and you'll see a lot of fights later in the game that might matter a lot. Especially if there's like uh, Lux players, if there's... Uh, Nautilus players, uh, set players, like, it's nice to, it's nice to be stun immune, um, in these situations. Uh, but yeah, I have this Orn here, I'm trying to think, is it better than somebody? I could technically play Orn. uh, Amumu's really strong, so I don't know if this is better or not, but Orn drops extra items, so I'm kind of down to just have the Orn in. Um, and I could still make Econ like this, so I put the Orn in in case I have to sell the Amumu to make Econ. Right, for one extra gold, I'd rather have the Orn, is my thought process. I don't think uh, Amumu is a better tank than Orn. Um, because I'm not going to keep Amumu anyways. Usually you keep Alawi, because you're playing to... Like, you basically, with this comp, you just play all the Story Weaver units. You just click all the Story Weaver units, and you can flex around the other units. Usually you play Alawi. Um, so this unit right here, you usually play Alawi because she has Arcanist. Um, right here, and Arcanist synergizes with this unit that I just got dropped, which is Zoe. Right, so Alawi and Zoe 
uh, give AP to your whole board, and that's like a little bit of a buff. It, it helps your board out a little bit, so that's why she's like the preferred warden. Uh, here I'm playing Soraka. Uh, I decided to sell the Orn just to make Econ, because if I lose the next fight, I could have made Econ by selling the uh, Amumu. I'm just really committed to making sure I'm as rich as possible. Right, I want to be able to push levels. I want to make sure that I'm kind of ahead of the curve. I'm not win streaking or lose streaking. So my goal, uh, making the econ threshold is way more important. Um, and basically, the reason I do this is Soraka gives Altruist. Altruist gives armor and magic resist, which is just good for the team. Soraka is really common to just play into the story weaver line. Uh, so for now, I play this. Um, I think I end up losing this fight. This guy just like, I don't know, Janna won. The shielding just like absolutely wrecks me. Um, if I was 5 story reaver, I win here for sure. Um, the big th the big thing is that until you're at the break point, like 5 story reaver, 7 story reaver, this kill doesn't really do anything, which kind of sucks. Uh, anyways, it's a Sivir encounter, and then we're going to get our next augment coming up right now. But like I said, this is a very easy line. I always suggest, especially if you're starting out uh, with this set, I know it's really late into the set. Story Weaver is one of the strongest comps right now, and it's also very good. Anyways, we have Story Weaver plus one. Um, I just take it. I think Unified maybe is like higher cap, but like I said, this is a very safe game, right? Uh, we play risky sometimes, and then we play safe other times, right? We gotta have both. We gotta have both in our in our in our little bag of tricks, right? Um, in this case, I'm just playing as safe as possible. Uh, story Weaver Quest not only does it make me uh, strong immediately, right? Right now, I'm 5 Story Weaver. If I had a Zyra, maybe it changes things. But I don't have a Zyra, right? So, um, I'm 5 Story Weaver instantly off of this I'd, off of this uh, augment. The other combats weren't, like, really broken, right? Like, I think the best one is probably Combat Caster. But I've seen Combat Caster do well. I've seen... Uh, some other things do really well like we can actually just look at it in terms of like the stats right i don't think i saw anything that was particularly broken right seven story weaver augments placement and we'll put gold i don't know if there was martyr or heavy hitter a heavy hitters is weird though i don't know if heavy hitters is better what are my options again let's let's double check my options i just want to make sure i didn't miss some like giga thing Inspiring Epitaph, Gagrantrian's Resolve, Long Distance, and that. Yeah, none of those are good. Long Distance doesn't work with Kale. I found that out the hard way one time. Uh, but anyways. Uh, Martyr, uh, just because it helps like sustain your front line. It's just really strong. Heavy Hitter is obviously really strong. Uplink, I think, works on Kale. So that's really strong. And then Big Gain, obviously, Call to Adventure. Like, a lot of these that pumping up. Things that, like, scale your board into late. And Combat Caster is just generically good. It's one of, like, the best things. And Learning to Spell. All these things that, like generically help buff your board over time are pretty good uh, i didn't know martyr was so good which i think i pass up on martyr later but i think martyr is um just because you're trying to stall out for the kale cast because as soon as kale cast everybody dies uh but those are some of the good augments just to keep in mind uh in terms of like gold strength augments uh but kale sometimes she doesn't count as a unit right like she doesn't work for long distance pals uh i found that out the hard way a long time ago and i realized yeah i'm never doing that again uh, here, Eternal Flame is anti-heal, but I feel like I can probably make anti-heal at one point in the game. Locket is just so good. Um, like I said, a lot of the time, especially when you get to, like, KL3, like when you get, uh, 7 Story Weaver, what really matters is, uh, stalling out long enough for the Kale to cast. This Kale takes forever to shoot her wave of, of damage, right? Like, you can watch her right now. Um, so that's why with this comp a lot of times like uh, these support items work out really well giving her a bunch of attack speed helps her to cast faster as well as uh, Making it so that she uh, She has a lot of frontline that supports her will also help her to cast right uh, my kale is also uh, you might notice that she's more towards the middle of the board the reason that my kale isn't in the corner is that when you watch kale attack she attacks in these like large waves right it looks kind of like this like an arrow right um, and what you want to do is you want that to hit as many units as possible. You want to be on a front angle, right? If these are the enemy units. If you're attacking from the side, right? Let's say this is your attack. As you can see, these waves, uh, you'll only hit this unit, right? These guys won't get hit by the Kale attack, right? The Kale does like AoE basically. So you really want to hit that AoE damage. Uh, here's a Story Weaver. There's a spat that I can make another Story Weaver spat. Um, it's kind of unfortunate because I already made uh, Story Weaver plus one, right? 
Uh, I'm fine vintage as well, so taking a spat instead of an, a component also limits the amount of items that I can make. I'm already going to be playing with low actual items because I'm fine vintaging everything. Uh, so I decide to not take a spat. I know spat looks very enticing. Uh, there's also the chance that maybe you hit 10 story reaver, stuff like that. You know, sometimes it seems like a bait. Uh, but instead, I just take Galio, right? Galio, I'm going to hit another Galio. Have, getting a, I, I know I'm going to get a Galio for free. But having a Galio uh, now, especially when other people seem to be playing towards similar lines where they might hold on to Galios, Galio 2 is a huge um, difference in this board because Galio is going to be your best tank that you're going to play with this board. So you really want to hit a Galio 2. Uh, hitting the first Galio is really important because it guarantees 7 Story Weaver. Uh, but especially in Champ Conference, I'm going to get another Galio, so that will be Galio paired. And then I'm very close to just getting a Galio 2, which also spikes my board really high. Uh, much more than a spat, right? Because the extra spat, what do I do? I just play some other useless unit. It's like I'm fine vintage anyways, right? Uh, I don't really care about playing other units. Um, besides the Story Weaver board, right? Um, like there's not another unit that I want to spat that's going to drastically spike me as much as like a Galio 2 that I'm probably going to be playing. Uh, here Cho'Gath appears. This is great. I'm fine vintage. I'm down. So Cho'Gath means I either gain, I either lose a shop, I lose a shop spot, but I gain a bunch of components. Now the Galio pick was amazing because now I'm Galio paired, so I don't have to worry that I might never find Galio three because I lose a shop or Galio two because I lose a shop spot. Uh, but at the same time, I get a bunch of components here that now I can just make uh, a bunch of fine vintage. I can just make a bunch of support items, right? Uh, the biggest thing with fine vintage is that like you have to balance how many support items you make versus how many uh, actual items you make for like a real unit. Uh, but here, if I have like so many items, right here, I'm I'm, I'm kind of debating what to make. Uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fine vintage everything, right? The game I'm, I'm 76 HP, so it's a little bit risky, right? I'm not like the most healthy in the in the game, but I also didn't spike yet, and I feel like um, I feel like this is fine. Right, the only thing I really need to make is anti-heal, but I feel like I'm fine. This part, this fight went fucking crazy. Did you see that? I just fucking died. I don't even know how. My kill just just got vaporized. This Kogma just just deleted somebody. That was crazy. Uh, but I basically lose this. I lose this so narrowly, by the way. Uh, but I, I would have 100% won. It, it's unfortunate. I think that's a positioning placement. Because I think if my kill was like one unit over... Like, the sniper damage wouldn't have, like, destroyed her as hard. So it kind of sucks. That's the risk of putting the kill in the middle. But you really want to get that effectiveness of her uh, wider uh, AoE-style damage, right? Uh, because, you know, you need to try and assemble yourself so that uh, their front line is kind of, like, in a straight line. And the kill attacks and she hits all the units, right? Get maximum amount of damage on her cast to make sure that you're killing as many units as possible. Anyways, uh, I look at my components here. Uh, ideally, I would have liked one of these components to be like an anti-heal item. I had the chance to make a Morello here, and I probably should have made a Morello if I'm being honest with you guys. Like, being truthful to myself and everybody else. Um, but the thing is, eh, I was kind of hoping that I can greed a little bit, right? I want to get these fine vintage stacks as soon as possible, um, right? So I don't want to, like, make a Morello and then have to use it because that's one turn more that I have to wait for the next fine vintage item. Uh, but anyways, I'm 7 Story Weaver, so I just level here, right? Um, I level because it's like I lose a little bit of gold, but I spike my board by a lot, right? Being 7 Story Weaver is huge. Uh, I have these items on Garen. That's fine. He's just, like, going to be the trait bot. He's going to hold all of the uh, lockets and stuff. And I made IE, and I'm just going to fine vintage it, right? I'm just going to go full fine vintage this game. It's not the end of the world. It's pretty bad because I don't have anti-heal. So some fights might be really poor. I'll try and point it out. Like, especially if you're playing, like, melee carries and stuff like that. But I'm just hoping that I hit enough fine vintage broken items that I just, like, scale off of those. Uh, we saw heavy hitters was really good. I didn't take it because what I did is I, I looked at my kale. And my kale's not at 1500 health. So I said heavy hitters probably isn't good here. Now heavy hitters is good because um, if you don't know, Story Weaver gives HP to all your units. So I'm pretty sure it puts everybody in a heavy hitters range. But I just don't think it works that well. So I just took combat caster because it's generically good. I think I also passed up on martyr. Yeah. So heavy hitters and martyr were the two really good ones. I just took combat caster because I know it's generically good. I didn't look at the stats while I was playing the game. Um, if I looked at the stats while I was playing the game, I think the correct decision would be to take martyr here. Right, based on the stats, it says Martyr is like a lot better than Combat Caster. But 
like i don't know the stats also said heavy hitters was really good i don't know if this is like without filtering if it's like some other version of story weaver that it's that it's uh looking at right because there is like a variations of story weaver where you're playing towards like zoe 3 for example and then heavy hitters makes a lot of sense but I, obviously Martyr helps out with the front line. It was basically like, do I care more about combat cast or do I care more about uh, Martyr healing the front line? I think the healing would have been better. Um, but I just took combat caster because I know combat caster is going to be good, right? Basically, like with almost every comp, combat caster is pretty good. So I kind of looked at it and I said, yeah, I think combat caster is fine here. I'll just go for combat caster, right? Um, I think it's a little bit of diminishing returns with the fine vintage because I have so much shielding already It might have been good to have healing instead, which is what martyr would have given me But uh, yeah, you know, I'm like whatever. I'm pretty sure kills uh, Kale scales later as well. So if I really want to giga greed heavy hitters would have been good Because this kale will eventually be in heavy hitters range if I'm not mistaken It's just because she's not immediately in heavy hitters range, right? She's not 1500 HP. So because she's not in heavy hitters range right now I feel the need to uh, take a different augment because I'm not like, you know, if I was win streaking, I would probably consider it more, if that makes sense, right? Uh, because I'm at 56 HP, I don't want to take an, another augment that scales me later because, like, I'm already scaling with fine vintage and I'm sacking a bunch of these rounds because I am playing towards these fine vintage components, right? I'm not slamming items, I'm weaker in general. Uh, I don't want to be weaker because my augment as well, right? I want to try and give something that compensates for the fact that I'm already playing this game in a little bit of a greedy way. Uh, but right now, this is going to be my spike round, right? Next round, I'm going to have two extra fine vintage items, and then this one's going to pop the round after. Uh, so I pop this first, just in case I need to see on Carousel what I need to pick. Uh, and I take Zeke's, obviously. And then here, it's it's Aegis or Zeke's, but I think take, take Aegis just because I I, I want to make sure my front line's good. Um, and then here, it's probably just take Morello uh, because now I'll actually get the anti heal item. It's a Riven, so I get an extra component, right? It was it was um it was Carousel, right? That's why I popped the support anvils because what if the Carousel was you get a support item, right? I wanted to pop. That's why I popped the components ahead of time. Uh, whenever it's an encounter Carousel, you don't know what it's gonna be. It could be um. Like, it could be Orn item, it could be extra component, it could be support item. So I pop them early, so I have as much information as possible so that when I go to this carousel, I can decide what I need most, right? And in this case, I, I uh, took all of these attack speed ones, so now I know, okay, I still need anti-heal. And then late game, I probably need better shred to compensate for the green kale, right? That doesn't have, like, perfect shred, right? What I mean by perfect shred is that uh, green kale only shreds 20%, and uh, shred components, so like... Uh, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a shiv or a spark. They shred 30%, right? 30% um, of the magic resist. So that's like the case where it's like, okay, that's why you would take one over the other. Anyways, I have Morello now. So I'm down to put on Zoe. Um, and we'll just rock it like this, right? Uh, as soon as I... By the way, these items are on Garen. As soon as I hit Galio 2, I will transfer the items onto the Galio. I'm holding these extra Garens. I'm not really going for Garen 3 unless I, like, natural a bunch more. Uh, but, you know, we'll be fine. And now, against most boards, I will be really strong. The support items are starting to stack in a ridiculous manner. Here, it's the option of Aegis or Zeke's. Um, I think my front line's good, right? I have triple frontline committed support items, so I'm more inclined to take Zeke's. Uh, even though my cursor looks like it's hovering ages, I think I was just debating between Zeke's and Zephyr. Because Zephyr uh, could, like, Zephyr can, like, awkwardly allow me to win a fight that I shouldn't win, right? If there's a board that's much stronger than me, but I get the Zephyr in the right spot, um, I can just cheese a win, right? That's why a lot of people say Zephyr cheesing, right? Um, so I feel confident that I could, but I, I think that it's not going to make a difference. I think there's a fortune cash out guy. Who's going to be very strong this game. I'm not sure if it's this game or the next game. But we'll see. Uh, oh, this guy's just the Kog'Ma guy. I'm pretty sure I beat the Kog'Ma guy now. He doesn't have enough front line. Right? He's trying to sp separate a little bit. But watch. When my kill attacks, he's just going to burst damage and kill everything. Right? All of these guys died. Now my kill's on... Oh, she's on the Nico. Hopefully the Nico dies first. Boom. Everybody's dead. And now they're overwhelmed. Right? And this is what I was saying. You need a good balance of front line. And as you can see, this is what I mean by you, you stack Zeke's. Right? Uh, as you can see, the Kale's attacking so much faster now. Um, and I think if I wanted to do, like, maximum damage, that's why I said um, I think the line is blue, blue, blue. Because blue gives you a bunch more AP. 
uh, to not only the Kale, but the units beside her. So if I was like rerolling to Zoe, for example, um, then it would be blue, blue, blue. I just took green to be safe because then I really need to make a sh uh, shred component. But like, imagine right now if I had a Shiv. If I had a Shiv right now and I had blue, blue, blue Kale, I'd be doing so much damage because I have so much attack speed. And the green kind of falls off late game. Like, it's kind of not necessary late game. Because, like, I'm probably gonna, if I get a shred component or a shred item, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. You know what I mean? So, like, here there's a tier. I'm probably gonna make a shiv if I have the option. Right? And, uh, we haven't been talking about it that much, but champion delivery or champion conference, sorry. I get the Irelia. So, I can swap out one of these units for Irelia. Um, it's probably Zoe, like, even Zoe with for Irelia is probably good. Uh, but I just make Shiv here, right, just to give better Shred. I'm just gonna push levels. Um, I could put Irelia here. Uh, she'll gain some attack speed. I didn't really position my board properly. I should have put in another frontline unit, like, uh, Nautilus as well, because he's in my shop. But it's fine. And as you can see, this guy has stun. Um, it, you saw the little thing that said can't be disabled. That's why Banshees is sometimes good here. Um, this guy is, is this the really strong guy? I forget. I think this guy's really strong. But I think I still beat him this turn, maybe. I, I don't know if this is, uh, maybe this isn't the fortune game. There was a game where somebody cashed out like a giga fortune that I played today. And I forget which one it was. And I think that's the reason that I didn't win. Uh, but now I'm level 9. I probably just want to roll a little bit here. Uh, right, having a Galio upgrade is really big. Lissandra can farm me a component, which is nice. That's why I'm putting Lissandra in right now. And I put her in front line because of the uh, double... Uh, what's it called? Because of my Aegis and stuff. Uh, my Aegis positioning isn't that great. Because I'm really only hitting this Kale. But it's a, it's, I'm, I'm struggling to find... Like, it's really difficult unless you put this in third row to hit like both the Irelia and the dude. I guess I can move him over one spot. Like, I think the Galio over one. So that both of these units are getting it. Uh, but ideally, I want my Irelia uh, in place of where this dude is, right? I think Banshee-ing... Like, th this is a Zoe 1, by the way. I just never found another Zoe. Oh, is this the Giga Fortune? Oh, no, this guy's just pumping up. I think this is the Fortune player I was talking about. I'm pretty sure this was a Fortune player. He just has everything. Uh, just very strong. Maybe it wasn't fortune. Maybe it was just maybe just like high rolled into it. That guy's very hard to beat. Uh, random support item for three rounds. I'm down for another locket. Just put in the front line. Who cares? Right? Can't be bad. Uh, but I think if I like, yeah, this this I think is better positioning, right? Um, the attack speed is kind of rough because I have um like this is why locket I like a little bit better than Aegis. Um, Aegis, basically, it only hits these two units. Um, but I want to Banshees my, uh, Irelia, right? So it's like, do I sack the extra little armor MR that I would get? It's like, I don't think my Irelia is going to get sniped very easily. Uh, and then I put in Lee in for Duelist. Uh, I was trying to farm a component with Lissandra, but it's kind of scary. I, I don't really want to, I don't really want to, like, do that. You know what I mean? Um... Like, I don't want to lose rounds because I'm greeting to try and get a component with a Lissandra one. I'd rather just play strongest board, which is to put in the Lee Sin for a uh, duelist for my Irelia. Is this, this is a strong guy. I'm fighting him again, I think. I forget. One of these, for, one of these guys was Fortune. Also, uh, note, seven story is bugged. That's why if you see me, I keep checking my Kale. Um, I think it's just with Call to Adventure. Uh, which is the one where it scales the Kale. But uh, Seven Story Weaver, sometimes your Kale doesn't get the extra AP. So you have to toggle in Seven Story Weaver. So make sure to like bench a unit and put it back in if you're unsure. Because sometimes your Kale just has less AP than normal. That's that's a thing. So that's why I keep checking it. Because I'm looking at like, is my Kale good enough AP or is it not good enough AP? Right? Do I have enough AP here or no? Uh, here I took Red Buff. Uh, I know that I already have Morello, but I was looking for an Irelia item, so I'm kind of down. Um, I could also just reforge the, uh, like, I could also just sell Zoe. Um, like, you know, if I get a replacement Zoe, I mean, I could sell Zoe and reforge the uh, Morello into another support item. But I think that's a little bit of wishful thinking. Um, I'm trying to reposition my units a little bit. I think there's a guy with a Zephyr. 
Um, like somebody else has a Zephyr in the lobby. So I'm trying to make sure that my Kale is in an okay spot. Uh, so I'm basically just swapping around the Sivir. Uh, because I still want this kill to be relatively close to the middle so that she gets effectiveness on her cast. See, like that cast, you saw it only hit one unit. Um, if my kill was positioned more towards the center, she probably would have killed all of them. Oh, I remember this fight being really shit. Yeah, look at this. Lilia lived with, like, she was, like, one off dying. Like, th that was a diff. Like, that one cast that my kill only hit one unit, that's what I mean, right? If my kill was in the middle there, I 100% win that fight. But it's just because there's one guy, I remember he had a Zephyr. That's why I'm that's why I'm swapping these units. It might have been the uh the Udir item. Like this Udir support. Somebody got a Zephyr off of it. And I think my kill got Zephyr one turn, and that's why. Like I said, it's still gonna be a top four, right? We're just trying to optimize to get as many placements as possible, right? If I get Lee Sin 2, um I duplicate I just duplicate the the uh what's it called? The Zoe right now. Cause I'm trying to be as strong as possible, right? I don't want to lose another fight. I'm 21 HP. Right, that's basically two lives at this stage in the game. So because I'm two lives right now, I don't want to be at a point where I lose a fight for no reason. Uh, because I felt like the last fight I lost for no reason. If I lose another fight for no reason, then I, I might randomly just go fifth, right? If I fight like the really strong guy. Like this guy is very strong, but I think I can beat him this turn, right? He's kind of saving up a little bit. Still doesn't have like everything upgraded, right? Doesn't have Kaisa upgraded. That's what I mean, right? If I, if I randomly lost that fight... I don't want to leave anything on the table. So I just duplicate the Zoe, uh, guarantee it right now. It's going to be very hard for me to go fifth, right? That's like the main idea. I just don't want to randomly go fifth, lose LP for no reason uh, because I'm greeting to go first, right? I don't think I'm going to go first this lobby. Uh, I have a really bad matchup into this ghostly guy. I should have enough damage, right? I should have enough damage to beat this guy, but it's scary because obviously I'm like full attack speed. So if the ghostly procs go the wrong way, there's a chance I just lose. You know what I mean? I'm um, down for Hodge here. Hand of Justice. Right? It's not the best Irelia item, but it does heal my Irelia. And sometimes my Irelia just dies randomly. Right? There's a chance that she just dies uh, because of... Um, what's it called? Trick shots, right? Trick shots can accidentally kill her. And um, what's it called? Uh, the Lilia player. There's a Lilia player somewhere that can also randomly kill her. So, you know, I just want to be really careful of that. Uh, here, I think the Zephyr is gone, so I should swap these positions. I think the best positioning would be Irelia dead in the corner. And then, um, like, Sivir and the other one. But anyways, uh, these guys are immune to stun because of my Banshee, so I'm not too worried about Udyr. Um, the Udyr, however, does kill my Kale, which is most of my damage. So that was pretty bad. So I'm losing against this guy when I could have easily beat him, I think. Uh, there's a chance I still beat him. Oh, nice, I still beat him. Okay, that was risky for no reason, because obviously if I was, uh, if I had the, uh, what's it called? If I positioned a little bit better to make sure I didn't get wrapped, right? Because the Udyr just kind of killed me. Uh, I rally a 2 now, huge spike for me. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm playing for first, like I said. Uh, this guy has a lot of HP, and this guy is the, is the, uh, the one that was very, 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 very strong, right? That was like, I think a fortune cash out, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I wasn't paying attention in the VOD review. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was a fortune get cash out, um, into Kaisa. Cause he has a fawn, right? I'm pretty sure this guy has a fawn. So I'm pretty sure it was fortune cash out, fawn, cash out into, uh, Kaisa board, fully capped, good items. Uh, this is the board I was saying that I might randomly lose to. Um, as you can see, the ghostly stacks are stacking. And you see how very close this game is? Like, I'm maybe like, this is like one auto away from dying. Right, if things went a little bit better, this guy's level 10. If things went a little bit better for him, I could just die. Yeah, this guy's definitely like a fortune cash out, right? Uh, but like I said, I don't think I beat this guy. Like, I don't think I win against him into the late game. Uh, I'm trying to bait where I'm positioning my units, right? So I'm putting some on one side. I really want to be positioned um, away from the Udyr. But I think I'm going to end up just putting everybody on the Udyr side. I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to position around him because, like, it's, uh, I always struggle with trick shots because sometimes trick shots just delete your backline. It's very explosive in its damage, right? So Udyr's on the right-hand side. He's not positioning for me. He's positioning for the other guy that he's fighting, this uh, Chelly here. So I just get a free position on this side. This is kind of the position that I want against him, right? Galio taunting. Um, Udyr not really worried about too much. But this Udyr is just so hard to kill as well. Udyr too. 
But yeah, it, it's close even against Ghost, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not winning the game. But like I said, I was just playing this as a safe little first, uh, safe little fourth, right? Obviously, I high rolled a little bit uh, with my support item drop. Sometimes you get a lot worse support items. Um, this guy just runs and takes TG. I wasn't really thinking about TG, but I should have taken TG for Lee Sin, right? And then I was looking to see if there's an Irelia item, which I don't think there is, right? I guess Gunblade. Yeah, it was probably Gunblade here. I took Heavenly Emblem, uh, but it was probably Gunblade. Yeah, I think the better item pick would have been Gunblade there. I think it would have been TG for Lee Sin too, or it would have been Gunblade. Uh, but it, my thought process was maybe I pivot to Wukong and I get three Heavenly in. Because I'm already playing the Soraka, right? I can always sell a Lowy, um, and just play a Wukong, and then I can get three Heavenly. So I put Heavenly Emblem on Lee Sin, and I'm thinking, like, maybe this can work out. Like, because I, I don't think, uh... I don't think Irelia with a Gunblade really helps, but it, sh it probably was Irelia Gunblade after I didn't get TG. So that's my bad. I'm trying to mimic the same positioning I had last time against him where I'm not really worrying about this Udyr until late game. And we're going to see how it goes. I think I'm just way too far behind, right? Like this guy has like best friends, level 9, pumping up so he's scaling attack speed, good items, fortune cash out, right? Has a fawn, right? Like it, this is... It's it's too much damage, right? Like this board does so much damage and I'm, I'm more of a stall comp as soon as my kale dies I'm kind of dead, right? It's like we're both playing a similar comp except he has better frontline and better damage here I'm just looking for Wukong, right? I'm kind of looking for Wukong um, You know, I, I think I'm kind of defeated. I'm kind of selling some units here um my items also didn't work out that well because I didn't get a third Irelia item. I think third Irelia over this heavenly spot would have been so much better. Um, and then I just completely griefed my position here. What I was trying to do is I was trying to third row everybody so that the the Aegis hits everybody. Instead, I just moved my all my items away from my front line. So this is a guaranteed loss. Uh, but basically, my thought process was, hey, if I want to try something else, let me try and get Aegis on both of my carries and hopefully it helps out. Uh, but I just I just griefed my entire front line, so it's just an insta lose. Uh, but that's my bad. I just I just was trying to do too much in one turn. Um, because if you move Galio to third row, then um, this item here that gives attack speed and armor would be able to hit three back row units. So I was gonna hit all three of them. So I would hit the uh, that's like maximum greed. But I just have to put my I had to move my entire front line to the third row, right? So you know I just I just kind of griefed it. Uh, but anyways. Top two, right? Easy, easy top two, right? I, I say that a lot in all my videos because I usually try and play easy, easy-ish comps and I try to like coast my way to like a top four, right? That's my play style. I don't really go for like a first or eighth kind of strategy and like play on the razor's edge all the time. But look, was that, that was easy, wasn't it? I just made a bunch of items. Obviously, like the reason it turned out to be a second is because I high rolled so heavily on the items and there was a lot of item encounters. So basically I have like six support items, right? Uh, a lot of times you might only end up with three or four support items um, and then like you know if you don't hit Zeke's or Banshee's uh, and you don't hit like Locket you run into a problem but here I, I have six support items with with items to spare so you know it worked out really well for me um, that's why it turned out into a second but like I said I've played this before and I get like fourths pretty consistently it's basically like a simpler a uh, very straightforward story weaver variation of the board and the only reason I went for it obviously was because champions conference right I was guaranteed seven story weavers so there wasn't really a risk of low rolling in terms of units it was just a matter of like um, actually hitting some some support items anyways thank you for watching hopefully that was fun and you can try it out in your games and should be an easy top four uh, or at least to me it seems like a pretty easy top four all right see ya